Next Chapter Podcasts presents the Play On podcast series, Macbeth. Episode 1, When Will We Three Make a King? For the best listening experience, be sure to use your headphones or earbuds. And don't forget to wash your hands. Early burly's done when the battle's lost and won. Before the setting of the sun, where's the place? Upon the heath, there to meet with Macbeth. Ah! I come, Ray Malkin. Pedacles. Soon then, fair, fair is foul and, and foul is fair. Hover through the fog and filthy air. King. Malcolm questioned that bloody man. He can report by the looks of him all the latest news of the revolt. This is our Thane Macduff. Macduff? Who, like a good and hardy soldier, fought against my captivity. Hail, brave friend. <laughs> Say to the king your knowledge of the battle as you last left it. Doubtful it stood. Like two spent swimmers that do cling together, stealing each other's breath. The merciless MacDonald, a worthy enemy, this rebel, whose villainous nature draws men to follow him, from the Irish Isles brought mercenaries and his own axemen, making fickle fortune smile on his damned death pile like a rebel's whore. <sighs> but t'was too weak for brave Macbeth. Well, he deserves that name. Disdaining fortune with his brandished sword, which still burned with bloody execution, like Valor's servant carved out his passage until he faced that honorless horde without a handshake nor a wish farewell, just ripped them open from entrails to entrance and rammed their heads atop our battlements. Oh, valiant cousin, <laughs> worthy gentleman. And from the east, where the loyal sun rises... Shipwrecking storms and fearful thunders break So from that spring where comfort seemed to come Discomfort rises huh? Mark King of Scotland, Mark huh. No sooner had justice, armed with valor Compelled these paid soldiers to turn their heels But Sweno, the Norwegian king, sensing advantage with replenished weapons and new supplies of men, began a fresh assault. Oh, did this not dismay our captains, Macbeth and Bankwell? <laughs> Lions dread not eagle, sparrow, nor hare. In truth, I must report they were like overcharged cannons with double the ammunition. <sighs> they doubly redoubled their efforts against the enemy. <laughs> Unless they meant to swim in their gushing wounds or reenact another crucifixion hill, I couldn't say. <sighs> but I am faint. My gashes cry for help. Your words as well as your wounds show courage. They smack of honor both. <sighs> Go. Go, get him surgeons. My king. Pardon. Who comes here? The worthy Thane of Ross, father. 
but a frantic look in his eyes. So look those who speak of frightful things. God save the king! What came from worthy Ross? From Fife, great king, where the Norwegian banners scornfully fly and fan our people cold. Norway's king, with terrifying numbers, assisted by that most disloyal traitor, MacDonald, the Thane of Cawdor, began a deadly conflict. Brave Macbeth, clad in impenetrable armor, point against point, rebellious arm against arm, ravished his unholy spirit, and finally, the victory fell on us! <sighs> yes! <laughs> Praise be to God. <laughs> Great happiness. And now Sweno, the Norwegian king, craves complete accord. Nor would we let him bury his men at St. Columba's Isle until he paid $10,000 for our general use. <sighs> No more will that Thane of Carter destroy our deep interests. Pronounce his impending death. And with his former title, now greet Macbeth. I'll see it done. What he has lost, noble Macbeth has won. Where have you been, sister? Killing swine. Sister, and you? A sailor's wife had chestnuts in her lap and munched and munched and munched. Give me, said I. Be gone, witch, the swill fed swine let cries. Her husband sailed to Aleppo, captain of the tiger. But in a sieve, I'll follow his sail. And like a horny rat without a tail, I'll do, I'll do. I'll do it. Oh, I'll give you a wine. <laughs> How kind. And I, another. <laughs> I myself have all the other. Fanned the very ports they blow. And from the places that they know, from their sailing chart, I'll drain him dry as hay. Sleep won't come in night or day. To hang upon his swollen lids cursed, he'll live a man forbid. Not sleeping for nine weeks times nine. He'll dwindle, peak, and then he'll pine. Though his boat will not be lost, still it will be tempest-tossed. Look what I have. Mm, show me, show me. <laughs> Here I have a captain's thumb, wrecked as homeward. Oh, he did come. A drum! A drum! Macbeth does come. <laughs> come, weird sisters, hand in hand. Travelers over sea and land, let us spin about about. Three to you, three to me. And thrice more times for destiny. Peace! The spell is buzz, buzz, buzz. <laughs> I have not seen a day so fair and foul. How much further to forest? So withered and so wild in their attire, they look not like they walk the earth and yet are on it. Alive? Or are you something that man may not question? You seem to understand me, since you've placed a bony finger upon your skinny lips. You should be women, and yet your beards forbid me from taking you for fair ones. Speak if you can. What are you? All hail, Macbeth. Hail to thee, Thane of Glam. All hail, Macbeth. Hail to you, Thane of Cawdor. Hey ho, Macbeth. That shall be king soon after. <laughs> Good Macbeth, why do you jump and fear things that sound so fair? Tell me true. Are you an illusion? Or that indeed which you outwardly show? Gracefully, you greet my noble partner with great predictions of lordly laurels and royal promise that he is by you enwrapped. But to me, no words. If you can look into the seeds of time and say which grain will grow and which will not, speak then to me, who neither begs nor fears your favors nor your hate. Hey. Hail. Hey. Lesser than Macbeth, but greater. Not so happy 
yet much happier. You'll beget kings, but never get a crown. So all hail Macbeth and Banquo. Banquo and Macbeth, all hail. Stay, you imperfect speakers. Tell me more. I was Thane of Glam's upon my father's death, but how Thane of Cawdor? If that Thane still lives, a prosperous gentleman. And to be king? Simply quite impossible to believe. No more than to be Cawdor. From where did you gather such strange information? Why, on this bloody heath, do you transfix us with your damn prophecies? Speak, I say. Bubbles, as does the water, just like these creatures. To where have they vanished? Into the air. What seemed so solid melted as breath into the wind. Wish they had stayed. But were they really here, those we speak about? Or have we drunk an insane elixir that takes our reason prisoner? Your children shall be kings. Ah, 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 ah. You will be king. <laughs> and Thane of Cawdor, too, didn't they say? <laughs> That's mm. the song they sang us. <laughs> Whoa! Who's there? The king has happily received Macbeth, the news of your success. And when he heard of your part in this victory against the rebels, he could not separate his great triumph from your own valor, which gave him grateful pause. Then he discovered on that selfsame day you led another defense against the Norwegian army, where, unafraid of death, and as its agent, a massacre you left in your wake. As thick as hail fell man after man and message after message, where all rang Macbeth's praises in this kingdom's great defense and sang them down before him. I am sent to give you thanks for my royal master by ushering you into his sight, not pay you. <laughs> and... In promise of a greater honor, from him he bid me call you Thane of Cawdor. So by this new title, hail, most worthy Thane, for it is yours. What? Can those devils speak true? The Thane of Cawdor lives. Why do you dress me in borrowed robes? Who was the Thane still lives, but he is under judgment for his life which he deserves to lose. Whether he was aligned with Norwegians, or did offer the rebels hidden help or advantage, or with both he worked to wreck his own country, I know not. But his treason, a capital offense, has already been confessed and proved and has overthrown him. Gloms and Thane of Cawdor, the greatest yet to come. Do you not hope your children will be kings, and those that gave me Thane of Cawdor promised them the throne? That... Trusted fully might yet light your way to the crown now that you are Cawdor, but at what price? It is strange how often that to lead us into dire harm, the dark devils and demons tell us truths, fool us with honest trifles to betray us with deepest consequence. Cousin, a word, I pray you. How quickly the king did proclaim this, but how soon will he begin this new role? Soon. Two truths are told as happy prologues to the rising act with the royal themes. Cawdor! <laughs> I thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. All these supernatural predictions cannot be bad, cannot be good. If bad, why did it give me a taste of success by starting with the truth? I am Thane of Cawdor. If good... Why succumb to a suggestion so horrid that my hair does stand on end and makes my steady heart knock at my ribs against the beat of nature? My fears filled with horrible imaginings? My thoughts of murder yet unrealized do now shake my belief in myself, smothering my unborn actions with torturous thoughts, and nothing is but what is not. If chance will make me king, why chance may crown me, without my help. Come what may, time moves on even through the roughest day. Look, our 
partners entranced. <laughs> Worthy Macbeth, we are waiting to serve you. You must forgive me. My dull brain was full of things forgotten. Kind gentlemen, your efforts are inscribed where each day I'll see them and remember. Let us go now to the king. Think on what has happened. When we've time, after weighing it all, let's speak freely our hearts to each other. Very gladly. Till then, enough. Come, friends. Ha! Has Carter been executed? Have those fulfilling that duty not returned? Father, they have not as yet come back, but I spoke to one who saw him die, who reported that he openly confessed his treasons, begged your highness pardon, and offered a deep repentance. Nothing in his life became him like the leaving of it. He died as one who is practiced in his own dying, throwing away the dearest thing owned as if it had no meaning. There's no art to know a man's mind from seeing his face. He was a gentleman on whom I built an absolute trust. Here, Macbeth, Thane of Globs, the newly, very newly, worthy Thane of Cawdor, General Banquo, the Thane of Lochaber, and the noble Ross, cousin to Macduff. Hail, hail. A worthiest Macbeth. The sin of my ingratitude even now weighs heavy on me. You are so worthy of a swift reward for your loyalty, but it's slow to come. Had you deserved less, I could repay you in thanks and coin. <laughs> I have only one thing left to say. Your worth is more than all that I can pay. The service and the loyalty I owe pays for itself in doing so. Your Highness' role is to receive our duties, and our duties are to your throne and state. As children and servants, we do all we must to protect your love and honor and to keep your trust. Welcome home now. I have planted you firmly in my soil and will nourish you till you bloom and flourish. (laughs) Noble Banquo, let no one say that you deserve any less for all you have done. Let me embrace you. (laughs) And place you near my heart. Oh, if I grow there, the harvest is yours, sire. (laughs) My abundant joys shamefully full. Try to hide themselves in sorrow's tears. Son, kinsmen, thanes, and you who are my nearest allies, know we will name as our most worthy heir... Malcolm, our eldest whom we will now call the Prince of Cumberland. May this noble honor be as a star and brightly shine on all those worthy. Now, let's press to Inverness to bind us further to you. Leave the rest to me. I'll be the messenger and make joyful my wife upon hearing of your approach. So humbly... I take my leave. My worthy Carter. The Prince of Cumberland. He is a step on which I must stumble or otherwise leap. Right in my way it lies. Stars, snuff out your light. Do not shine on my dark and deep desires. The eye winks at the hand, but now let it see that what the eye fears is what has to be. True, worthy Banquo. Macbeth's so fully valiant that by praising him I am fed. He is a banquet to me. (sighs) Let's follow him to where he's gone to bid us welcome. He is a peerless kinsman.
The Play On podcast series, Macbeth, was translated into modern English verse by Migdalia Cruz and directed by Edward Torres. Episode scripts were adapted and produced by Catherine Eaton. Sound design, mix engineering, and original music composition by David Molina. Sound engineer, Daniel Benshimon. Executive producer, Michael Goodfriend. Senior producer, Miriam Lauba. Managing producer, Robert Cappadona. Coordinating producer, Taylor Bailey. Casting by the Telsey office, Karen Castle, CSA, and Ada Karamanian. The cast is as follows. Armando Riesco as Macbeth. Sabrina Guevara as Lady Macbeth. Chinaza Uche as Macduff. Jordan Barbour as Banquo. Bernard White as Duncan. Daniel Jose Molina as Malcolm. Flor Delis Perez as Lady Macduff. Barzan Akavan as Ross and the Porter. Annie Hank as Lennox. Elijah Goodfriend as Macduff's son. Featuring Manila Luzon, Monet Exchange, and Miss Peppermint as the witches. Also featuring David Watson on the bagpipes. Voice and text coach, Rebecca Clark Carey. Equipment and recording engineer, Tommy Freed. Sound effects assistant, Ben Welty. Production assistant, Benjamin Goodfriend. The senior manager of business operations and partnerships at Next Chapter Podcasts is Sally Cade Holmes. The Play On podcast series, Macbeth, is produced by Next Chapter Podcasts and is made possible by the generous support of the Hits Foundation. Visit playonpodcasts.com for more about the Play On podcast series. Visit playonshakespeare.org for more about Play On Shakespeare. Hear more about the Play On Shakespeare podcast series by listening to bonus content at playonpodcasts.com where you'll find interviews with the artists, producers, and engineers who brought it all to life. And don't forget to wash your hands. <laughs>